Alhamdulillah, I'm very thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, for having this opportunity to meet uh, all these beautiful souls in front of me. Alhamdulillah. And first and foremost, I would like to apologize to everyone. I'm not the best person to replace Ustaz Hiza, okay? I'm just here because of three reasons, mashallah. Can I share? Is that okay? Okay. Uh, first one, I, I got this message quite uh, quickly. This is a very last minute thing. Okay, uh, first, uh, I got a message from Akhuna Hadik, mashallah. He's my very good friend. Alhamdulillah. So he was asking me whether I'm free or not to, 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 uh, to replace, not replace, uh, that's not the right word, to cover for Ustaz Hiza, not because he has something on. Okay, the second one from Ustaz Safari. Ustaz Safari, yeah, that's, that's my very good friend. Ustaz Safari is very humble, huh? he's late to the team, Ustaz, it's Ustaz. Ustaz Safari. And the last one is, of course, uh, Al Fadhil Ustaz Hiza. Okay, sorry, the mic is a bit. So uh, we hope that inshallah all of you can pray for me to finish my master's thesis uh, for the 16th of November inshallah. And alhamdulillah, uh, I would like to thank uh, Qari Darwish. He is not here. Is he here? Okay. Mashallah, he went up uh, with his dad. Uh, Haji Anwar, mashallah, they are both uh, the mashallah people of the Quran. <laughs> so that, uh, luckily they are not here so I can read my Quran now. Uh, <laughs> and also uh, Prof. Dr. Farouk. From Pakistan, I just, I just talked to him, mashallah. And I think he came with his friend, right? Yes, mashallah. Is he here? In the middle, right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> mashallah. Doctor, uh, thank you for coming here, okay? Uh, I, I asked permission from them to speak. And the Palasala, they don't talk to us like that. I'm talking good things about you, mashallah. I'm just saying that if I were to say the wrong things, no. So I hope not, inshallah. And of course, uh, my very good friend, uh, Mr. Paris from RSIS. He, uh, mashallah, if it, not because of him, I won't be here. Like literally, because when I was uh, doing my O level, A level, I was so good in my Arabic, uh, not just Arabic lah, so much other goes. Okay, math, science. So he's the one that who taught me a lot uh, since O level days. No, since Sijil Sanawi and Pan Sai Four, I was doing my Osawi studies examinations. He helped me a lot. O level, A level, and up till uh, NUS, Alhamdulillah. So thank you for being here, and don't uh, comment anything okay, about my English or my grammar. All right? <laughs> don't, don't ask me any questions. Alhamdulillah. Okay, um, this is a very interesting topic. Manifesting Shahada in our daily lives. Okay? I, believe that, I believe that all of you know the meaning of Shahada, and I'm not here to tell you what's the meaning of Shahada, like what's the the Lobatan or Shara'an, it's not, it's not of that, more of the application. How do you like really instill Shahada in yourself? In living in this uh, current world, I believe that we have uh, lots of challenges and obstacles in life, and how do you manifest that Shahada to be a true Muslim, inshallah. Okay, so um, let's revise first, what are the five pillars of Islam? Okay, the first one, Bismillah. Can I get someone to answer the first one? Mr. Faris, Mashallah, the first, the first one. Shahada, Mashallah. Okay, the second one, anyone? From the floor? Salat. Eh, jangan takut takut, don't hesitate, don't hesitate. It's okay, it's okay. Salat, alright. The third one? Zakat. Doesn't matter, okay. The fourth one? Fasting. Fasting in, in Arabic? Salat, so, Mashallah. Okay, the last one is? Hajj. Hajj, I believe, is the, is the most hardest to, to practice because it's very expensive, am I right? It's $12,000 and you need to read for the quota. 
But inshallah, today we're going to be talking about a shahada, which is uh, testifying that we believe that uh, Allah is a God, and there's no God besides Allah, and Muhammad is the servant of Allah, and also the messenger of Allah. Okay, so this is the two. So, this is one of the most common hadith how we should see our shahada. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh, or ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan rasulullah. Okay, so when do we say our shahada? Like really when? During our prayers, am I right? So every time we are saying our shahada means we are like renewing our faith, reaffirmation, okay, recontracting. This is the word that my ustaz used because whenever when we are as a Muslim and we do things in life, you know, in the morning we might be Muslim, you know, but at night we can be someone else. You know, you know what I'm trying to say, my ustaz say in a harsher words, he said, Pagi jadi orang Islam, malam buat benda orang kafir buat. Okay, this is like one of the paling sakit punya benda lah. Okay, for instance, my Ustaz cakap, um, when he was younger, what he said that, in the morning he used to recite the Quran. Okay, in the middle of the night, he go, he go, he went out drinking. At the point of time, his awareness of Islam is not uh, as he is now. I mean, he's, he doesn't understand Islam as much. He said Islam is just he thought about reading Quran, Salat, but you can do whatever you want. But what he said was his past stories. And now to make him a, a, a legit ustaz, like a legit word to make an ustaz, he really practiced the true Islam. He starts back from the first, shahada. He, he says with the shahada to make sure that as a Muslim, there are certain standards or rules that you need to follow or abide. Okay? And you cannot be like anyhow or what you understand Islam as what you understand. Okay, you need to follow a certain guidelines. And what are the two divine guidance of Islam? The first one is al Quran, and the second one is a Sunnah. And there are many more afterwards. Okay, inshallah. The definition of um, Shahada, uh, to one of the Islamic scholars said, uh, Shahada means Iman, means once, once you are seeing that you believe in Allah and Prophet Muhammad, means you are having faith. And if you don't ever see that, meaning that your faith might be questionable. Okay, you, if you say that you are Muslim, but you don't see your shahada, means you are not a Muslim. Muslim means you need to follow every single step of the five pillars of Islam. Start from shahada, salat, zakat, haji, puasa. Okay, you need to do everything. But only for hajj, uh, it's exceptional because it's not that easy to practice or to do hajj in Singapore. Okay, so the easiest is to do umrah, but I believe that umrah requires a bit of money, which is, I believe it's $4,000. Okay, if you don't have that money, for the meantime, it's okay. But if you see that you don't have the money, but you can go to London, uh, you can go to Korea, think, okay, uh, you can go to other countries, but you don't go for Umrah, that one is questionable. Okay? So as long as you can't afford, it's okay for now, but once you are, you can afford to make your Umrah, once you're working, please best to go. Alright? So the first one that you need to do is Shahada. Shahada doesn't require you money, am I right? Pelu, do you need to say? Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. It's free. Okay, the second one, salat. Can I buy you that? Do you need to pray? Do you need to pay to, to pray in the mosque? Tak bayar. You want to go for salat tarawih for instance, you just go. But the salat that I'm talking about is your five daily prayers. It's compulsory and it's obligatory. Alright? Okay. So uh, one of the scholars said about iman, al-iqrar, al-iqrar bil qalbi, wal-nutq bil lisan, wal-amalu bil jawarih. Okay, al-iqrar bil qalbi means to believe with one's heart. Okay, wa nutqu bil lisan to confess with one's tongue. And the third one, wa al-amalu bil jawarih to demonstrate in one's physical actions. Okay, so in Islam, you need to have these three concepts. Al-iqrar bil qalbi means you need to believe in Islam first. Okay, don't talk about faith. You just need to believe in the concept of having religion. And if your religion is Islam, or okay, kalau, as a Muslim you believe in Islam, you need to believe with your heart. Okay, the second step is to confess with one stomach. Means you need to, to recite Al Quran, you need to see uh, uh, all the good things, okay, you need to show. The last one is to demonstrate with one's physical actions. Means you need to pray or to do all the good deeds that you can ever do. Okay, so this is the concept of uh, defining Iman. For the first step is having this tree. To believe, to confess, and to demonstrate. To demonstrate, inshallah. Okay, shahada also means oath 
our pledge. Uh, for instance, if uh, as a Singaporean we have our pledge, right? As a Muslim, we also have one. And once you have that pledge, for instance, and you must never go back on your words. If you believe in Islam, for instance, you say that Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah, but you're doing the otherwise. You're doing all those maasiyat. You're doing all those uh, prohibitions. Okay, and means you're contradicting yourself with the pledge that you made at the very first place. So once, uh, you need to know that as a shahada, it's like, uh, okay, for, uh, I'm just giving you an example of having your phone. If it means you buy contact. Let's say I'm having Stahab. I'm not promoting Stahab, eh? Okay, I'm just trying to share. Okay, having a shahada means like, means I make a contract to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I believe that Allah is the God and Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God. And once I made the shahada, you know, once you reach the two years contract, you're gonna get vouchers, am I right? Uh, means that's the reward for you. And of course, the reward for us Muslims is to have Jannah in the hereafter. Okay? And if you were to breach that contract, means you see, Astahab, I don't want you anymore, I'm gonna take settle, what? Settle life. Eh? <laughs> uh, cheaper, right? So if you wanna take that, you need to pay off, like, uh, because you breached that contract, you need to pay. And I believe that what we are trying to say as a Muslim, if you breach that contract of religion, as a Muslim, you know what are the consequences, am I right? Okay, I'm not here to say that the raka is a consequence and but we know exactly what are the consequences of not, of being murtai. Okay, inshallah. Can I drink some water? Shahada, he said that if you want to say your shahada, it mustn't have, it must not have any gaps in between. For instance, if you say Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah, you must continue to say Ashhadu Anna Muhammadan Abu Rasulu or Ashhadu Anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. You must not have that gap for too long. Okay, that's one way of saying your shahada. Like you make uh, during your tahiyyat awal, am I right? Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah, Ashhadu Anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. It's like that. The, uh, that's how you say your shahada. Okay. The second part of learning shahada, you need to know the exact meaning. The exact meaning means whenever you say your shahada in your salat, you need to understand the meaning of shahada. And when you say ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, okay, for instance, if our our mother language, mother tongue language is Malay, you need to know that. Okay, aku percaya dan Tuhan tu Allah dan saya Tuhan selain Allah dan Nabi Muhammad tu Rasulullah Allah. You need to understand that you cannot read shahada just like ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, ashhadu an muhammadur rasulullah. If you were to say that, your salat is not counted. Means your shahada is not valid. Once it, whenever you want to say your shahada, you need to understand the meaning and you must, at that point of time, you must know that I'm saying that because I believe in that system or in that words. Okay, that's very important. And one of the best part of saying your shahada, once you say ashhadu Allah, the word la ilaha illallah, there is no other gods besides Allah. That part, if you say it's a key to go to the heavens. Uh, in Arabic, they call it miftahul jannah, the keys to the heavens. Once you say, La ilaha illallah, even once in this world, the hellfires are not supposed to touch you in the hereafter. But that doesn't mean that you say, La ilaha illallah, you can do all the prohibitions. It's not like that. Okay? But remember, once you say, La ilaha illallah, this is your contract, and, and Allah will protect you from the hellfire. This is what, uh, in, in a very prominent hadith, they say, once you say, La ilaha illallah, it, it, it's, it's considered as the keys to heaven, and the hellfires will never touch you. Inshallah. So let's make a point to say La ilaha illallah together. Okay, let's start with Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. One, two, three. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. Alhamdulillah. Inshallah. And uh, one of the hadith that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Jaddidu imanakum." Okay, means uh, you need to uh, renew your iman every time, every single day, every single uh, moment. Okay, so the companions of Rasulullah asked, Oh Rasulullah, uh, what do you mean by Jaddidu Imanakum? Rasulullah said, Akhiru min qawli la ilaha illallah. You need to say uh, la ilaha illallah as many times as possible. This is one of the way. Okay, by saying la ilaha illallah is considered as to, uh, to renew your iman, to, to strengthen your iman just again. 
Okay, and the last one for the definition. Um, Habib Ali Zainal Abidin once quoted from a hadith. Okay, I can't remember the, the exact hadith, but he said that Allah will never give this world. Allah will give this world whatever you want in this world. Allah will give to those who He, he loves and to those who He hates. Means that Allah will give this world to the Muslims and to the non-Muslims. But the love of religion, but Allah will only give religion for those who He loves. Meaning to say that Allah is very, uh, uh, is very fair and He is just. For instance, that. Uh, I have a student asking me, uh, Ustaz, so you are trying to say that uh, all the Muslims are going to the heavens and the non-Muslims will go to the hellfires? I say that uh, if you learn about Islam, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Wasallam, during his era, okay, there are some non-Muslims that are selected to be in the heavens approved by Rasulullah uh, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam okay, because of their good deeds. But we as a Muslim, it's quite different from them. Once we say, La ilaha illallah, okay, if I believe that maybe we are not one of them, some of the Muslims will be in the hellfire. In fact, most. Because we are not practicing Muslim and maybe you know, in, in our daily life we do something that is not in accordance with the religion, we'll be dipped in the hellfire for a little while, okay? And we'll be taken out because of the word La ilaha illallah in our hearts, okay? But those who do not have La ilaha illallah will be dipped forever and for eternity. So this is one of the ways uh, to make sure that we are not uh, in hellfires, just by saying la ilaha illallah, as simple as just by saying la ilaha illallah. Okay, and I was saying about fairness, about uh, just. Uh, Allah will give uh, the nur or the hidayah, okay, the guidance to the non-Muslims if they are good. I mean, if they have good characters, Allah will give them the signs. Allah is very fair. Allah will never let, you know, Muslims are going to heaven and the non-Muslims go to the hellfires. It's not like that. Once they have good traits, okay, and they can be, maybe that person doesn't believe in uh, the existence of God. But if they are having good traits, Allah will give them the signs. That is the fairness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-adl. Okay, so you need to know that you must never question about the fairness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, uh, so this is one of the story of uh, Nabi Nuh alayhi salam, Prophet Nuh alayhi salam, or Prophet Noah. Okay, when he was about to pass away, he passed on away uh, to his son. He said that, if you were to say La ilaha illallah, this is uh, Prophet Nuh, you are not talking about Islam, it's just talking about their own religion at the point of time, but still believe in Allah. They say, uh, O son, if you were to say La ilaha illallah, and you would, if you were to take this kalima or these words, if you were to put it on a, uh, what is touching in English? A weighing scale. Uh, you know, a, balance, a balancing scale, okay, oh, sorry. So, uh, the this uh, the seven, the seven, uh, all the the entire universe and the uh, and the heavens, if you were to put on the same weight scale, the weight of La ilaha illallah will overweigh whatever that is uh, in this universe. The weight La ilaha illallah is heavier than all those. And at that point of time, Prophet Nuh alayhi salam was preaching that to his son. Okay, we are not talking about Islam at that point of time, but just believing in the word La ilaha illallah. Another story of uh, the, the father of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We are talking about uh, what's the name of the uh, Prophet's father? Abdullah. Am I right? Yeah. Okay, Abdullah. So uh, of course, uh, before Prophet Muhammad uh, was born, uh, Pro uh, Abdullah was a leader. Okay, he's very uh, eloquent. He's very charismatic. Okay, uh, uh, and he's the leader of his tribe at the point of time. Okay, and he's the type that you know when the lady. So uh, Abdullah, they will swoon over him, mashallah. Okay, so uh, this is the, 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 the iman of Abdullah. Okay, before Islam. So when he was walking at this one uh, pasa, okay. Uh, so when he was walking, he was approached by this one uh, prostitute. Okay, so the prostitute say, "Oh Abdullah, I'm giving you uh, myself for free. You want to sleep with me?" Abdullah said, "If I, I, I." I did rather die than to do something that is not halal, which is haram. You just imagine Abdullah saying that. Then, uh, of course, of course, that being Abdullah, okay. So he said that uh, to the lady. The lady uh, doesn't understand, okay. So afterwards, uh, after many months, after many years, Abdullah got married with. Sorry, Amina, mashallah. Okay. So when he got married to Amina, okay, and uh, but at the point of time. 
uh, Muhammad uh, wasn't still there just yet, okay? He walked at the same pasar, okay, he walked again, then he go there, then he met the prostitute, then he said uh, to that lady, oh lady, are you, are you not going to offer me a, anymore? Then the lady said, uh, oh Abdullah, I'm not interested in you anymore, because I do not see the light in you, but I see the light in your future baby. Means, then he said to the lady, uh, to the lady why are you saying uh, uh, such a thing? Then he said, because I want to marry you because I know that uh, the prophecy that a, a, a good child will be born from you and from, from a lady that got married to you. Trying to say that uh, Abdullah who preserved the halal way at the very end, he can do all the haram things that he wants at the point of time. But because he wants to preserve his iman at the point of time, to believe in Allah at the same time, to have a, a, a very good offspring, he did not do all the harams at the, at the very at the very early days. So Alhamdulillah, this is one of the ways to show that uh, if you were to do zina, you know why I'm talking about this, if you were to do zina, that at that point of time, your iman is being taken out by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you were to die at that point of time, you'll be nothing. Means your goal, so your iman is not there. So one of the ways to see that how do you start off properly is to make sure that you fend off yourself from all this uh, ma'asiyat or all these negativities from the very start, inshallah. Okay. The next point. Regarding the very best components of Rasulullah Sayyidina Abu Bakr alayhi salam. Okay, uh, Abu Bakr is one of the best components of Rasulullah, I would say, because he started off uh, being Rasulullah's companion since young. Okay, and this is a very popular story. I believe that uh, most of us know the story. When uh, the plot against uh, to kill Prophet Muhammad by Abu Jahal. Okay, it's a very uh, popular story. So Sayyidina Abu Bakr is the person that says that, okay, oh Muhammad, let's run together. I'm going to save you. Let's run together. So uh, at one point of time, they hid in Gua, Cave Thur. Okay? And you know what happened, right, in the Cave Thur? So while the assassins were you know, trying to find Prophet Muhammad, they hid in Cave Thur. Prophet Muhammad was sitting down. Okay? And fell asleep on Abu Bakr's lap. Okay, but knowing that in the cave you're gonna see uh, uh, all these venomous animals, okay, at the point of time at the desert. So Sayyidina Abu Bakr he has that instinct that you know there are many holes in front of uh, in front of them. So one of the holes he, he felt that something might come out from that hole. Sayyidina Abu Bakr of uh, Allah Anhu put his leg inside. He said that something might uh, be coming out from there. So uh, apparently a uh, scorpion stung him at the point of time. Okay, so he was in in pain and in agony. But he tried not to cry, okay. But of course, uh, it's very painful. I believe I tapen akan nas dengan nas kopiin, okay. But Sayyidina Abu Bakar at the point of time cried. Okay, he tried to endure because he doesn't want, he did not want Prophet Muhammad to wake up from his sleep, okay. So the tears fell on Prophet Muhammad's cheek. So Prophet Muhammad bangun dan cakap, Oh Abu Bakar, why are you crying? And he saw that you know uh, he got stung by a scorpion, okay. So. Uh, then, then Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. One of his mujizat, uh, I'm just going to share. Okay, uh, he spit on his hand. He just uh, put on uh, Sayyidina Abu Bakar's kaki, and of course, it recovers uh, at the point of time. Mashallah. Uh, so, trying to say that if you have a friend that can do that for you, and this friend is, for instance, the best friend of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he's going to protect Prophet Muhammad. He said that if Prophet Muhammad is going to die, there will be no Islam, right? So he believes that he needs to protect Islam. And by protecting Islam, he's sacrificing himself. You don't get the wrong idea. Eh? You don't get the wrong idea. Sacrificing yourself doesn't get the wrong idea. I'm trying to see that uh, Sayyidina Abu Bakar did all those things for Prophet Muhammad because he believes that Prophet Muhammad is going to, to preach Islam in the future. So he dares to do that. And that's the shows that the Iman of Abu Bakr is heavier. Uh, Sayyidina Omar once said in a, in a very prominent hadith, Sayyidina Omar said that if the Iman of Sayyidina Abu Bakr if you, again, you take that balance, right? You take all our Iman and say, Abu Bakar's Iman, Abu Bakar's Iman, gonna outweigh our Iman. Because he's the type of a person when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam talks about Isra Mi'raj, he's the first one to believe in Isra Mi'raj. Okay? When he talks about protecting Prophet Muhammad, he's the first one. During the war of Uhud or Badr, he's the first one to go to volunteer. He's that kind of a Sahabat, and his Iman is uh, unshaken, and he's one of the best Iman that we can ever uh, take an example of.
Inshallah. Okay, now let's get to the reality of this world when we are talking about manifesting shahada in our daily life. So I give all those stories for us to ponder, or at least you can uh, take a, a learning point from all those stories. Okay, but the manifestation of shahada, I believe that uh, it's not as easy as uh, you know what we always say. You know, uh, believe in Islam, believe believe in Allah, believe in Prophet Muhammad. Of course, we can say that. But when, when but when we are tested with uh, life obstacles, challenges, uh, tests. How, how do we say that, uh, you know, I have one friend, uh, he said that, she said that, uh, uh, Tama, I always make da'wah, but when I'm tested, like, I, I, I lose my faith. So she, at a point of time, she said that I was about to kill myself. Can I say, uh, you, you can't be doing this, right? You're the one who puts this. So, so I believe that sometimes when you are tested, even the best of us, you know, can, can, can resort to that kind of uh, things to do. For instance, that that person wants to commit suicide just because he was, like, she was being tested. So I said to her, let's get back and let's not talk about religion first. You need to settle your things properly. So I say, uh, seek professional help, settle your uh, divorce letter, blah, 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 to do all these things. Then she get back on, his, uh, on her feet, mashallah. Okay, try to see that. Uh, sometimes when we are talking about religion, you ask, uh, okay, why, why am I mumbling? Okay, when we are talking about Islam, or we are talking about uh, Islam as a whole, it's not about just saying that you are Muslim, but when a real life challenge hits you, you can't take it. Okay, as a Muslim, for instance, I have this one story of a, of a, of a very good friend of mine. Okay, she said that, uh, Ustaz, you can share this to the masses, uh, so maybe they can learn uh, a thing or two. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. At the age of 11 years old, when she was in primary 5, okay, uh, my, my Malaysian friend, okay, she said that she was uh, raped by her father, okay, but at that point of time, she did not know that that thing is abnormal. She thought that this is something that's very normal. Okay, this is a is a Muslim family. Okay, this happens in a Muslim family. Okay, so she was raped since primary five up to the age of uh, SPM, which is I believe in sec four, O level. After that, she got to know that uh, it's a big leap for her because uh, the dad always like make sure that she doesn't mix with the uh, people outside, just to make sure that the dad can rape her again and again. Okay, So she got to know that uh, this thing is very abnormal and she started to find uh, help from the friends. And of course, she's very skeptical of the teachers and also her mom. Because I said, uh, and then I said to her, why don't you tell your mom? She said that if I were to tell to my mom, uh, of course my mom will not be my, with my dad anymore. So I, I just want, I don't want my mom to get sad. So I say you are you are sacrificing yourself. I see. Then she said that there are many reasons uh, why I did not report. So I say okay, uh, go on with your stories. And she said that she said that once she at, the, at one point of time when she rejected her dad, her dad punched her face. Okay, step on her after after the after the report. So I say okay now after you tell, after you told me this story, what have you done to to make sure that this uh, problem is going to be settled? Then she said that uh, I cannot report to the police. I said, why? You know, the, the plot twist is, uh, she said that because my father is a police officer. Uh, no, not in Singapore. I have been in Singapore, it will be a very big news. So uh, I said to her, so you uh, know what I'm trying to tell me? That she, uh, uh, I want to get married. Okay? So I said, okay, alhamdulillah. But the problem is, what if my husband uh, no, finds out that I'm not a virgin anymore? Then I say, how would your husband find out? If your husband find out, means your husband also not a virgin. I'm just kidding. Lah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just, you know. But of course, of course, I said, I said, I said to her, uh, we have two choices in Islam. One, you can tell your husband, your future husband, that uh, this happens to you in the past. But the second one, you can not tell him. But sometimes, to be fair, I believe that you need to tell him. Okay? And Alhamdulillah, she got married. Okay? And uh, even though that she went through all these hardships, okay, she does not resort to any like uh, for making suicide, she's not depressed, she's very strong, she's a very strong lady to be able to get back on her feet to survive in this world, mashallah. And then uh, when she got married, she came back to me, uh, Tam, thank you so much for your advice and everything I say, uh, but I'm still not happy with you, I, I said to her, because I believe that you need to report what, you know, what has been done to you. I mean, you need to report about your death, because it's not fair. If you let these kind of people out, uh, out in the society, it's not healthy. Okay, they, they must be judged. They must be, you know, uh, 
be punished. I believe that's the word. Okay, and and Alhamdulillah, I see I, I'm seeing all these stories. Then I told uh, I tell these stories to the situation, and this is a friend of mine. She she's able to you know, uh, pull her out uh, herself from that vicious cycle. And I believe you can do it too. Islam is not just about preaching, but about practicing. Uh, in terms of needs, like whatever happens to you, what can you, how do you find ways to get out of that situation? This is very important, inshallah. Another friend of mine, um, she said, uh, she said uh, about a very uh, disturbing thing to me. She said that when he was younger, he had boyfriends, okay? He had boyfriends. And you know, this is just a story of how she gets back to be a to be a strong Muslim, I would say. Okay, when she was really young, she she uh, engaged herself in all these uh, uh, sexual activities, which is not uh, definitely not healthy. And she she got pregnant at a very young age. I think at JC level, which is like 18 years old. Okay, so when she got pregnant, she said that uh, I cannot I cannot bear this child, and I need to abort this child. So she aborted. And what's the ruling for abortion in Islam? It's haram, you're not supposed to do that, okay? Uh, and at the point of time, the baby is quite big already. So she said that uh, it's very painful. She said the doctor took out the top and cut all the babies and see. Then she said that at the point of time, she doesn't, she don't even regret about it. But the second time happened, she got pregnant again. Okay, she said that, but this time around, okay, she, she, uh, she feels that this is not the way. She's going to abort again. But she's not going to abort and say, I'm going to keep this child because uh, she started to have that awareness of Islam, okay? But the boyfriend came to her and, you know, pija, pija, the baby, and everything. So listening to all these very disturbing stories about a uh, Muslim family, it's, it's, not, it's not healthy for me. But I said to her, so what's next? Uh, then she said that, uh, of course, she reported uh, that incident to the police, and that guy is being dealt with, okay? And Alhamdulillah, again, she got married uh, to a very, uh, mashallah, guy that can accept her. So, and I believe that when all these people are being tested with all these hardships, they do not resort to anything else but to believe in Allah and they believe that inshallah Allah will give them the wings you know, to, to get back to the society. SubhanAllah, mashallah. So, um, you know, sometimes when I talk about Islam, but when this thing happens, you know, sometimes it's not if we are to be in that situation, are we, are we able to be as strong as them? That's, that's a very good question. Okay, and if I'm in that situation, for me I just bat tie the guy lah. Tak payah dipori bola bat sangat. Okay, so uh, another friend of mine, uh, she was contemplating whether to take this scholarship. She said that, uh, Tom, if I were to get this scholarship, I need to take off my hijab, my tudung. Then I said, uh, I said to her, so what's your choice? Well, what, what's your? Are you, you going to take this? And she said that, uh, no, I'm not. So I said, okay, that's your choice, but. Uh, her friend said that, uh, hey, you're, you're quite stupid to reject this scholarship. You can always wear your tudung back again right, after work. I say, it's not, it's not wise to say that. For you to be wearing tudung or not, it's your personal choice. Okay? And, and her personal choice is to wear tudung, and she doesn't want that scholarship. The blessing is in this guy, some others get the scholarship, am I right? Means that's a risky for other people, not for her. But to have this uh, kind of uh, conviction, and I'll say that, she can make that decision is my job. I don't know if I'm, uh, if my mom, one of my friends said that, thank you, Sabah. Scholarship is so much more important than the Tudung. But for her, Tudung is much more important. These are, I believe that it's up to you what you want to do. If you want to take the scholarship, then you are answerable to your decisions. Am I right? If you want to take uh, the Tudung, you don't get the scholarship. Believe me that in, in life, you need to understand the concept of this world is temporary, and the hereafter is for eternity. So whatever choice that you're going to do, remember that these choices here are the investment for the hereafter. If you make the wrong choice in the hereafter, you're going to bear different consequences. It's not as easy as it is, but when you're tested, you need to make some uh, decisions that what, what I call wise decisions with no regrets. Okay, sometimes you just need to take a stand in life. Even though you might lose out in this world, but believe me, inshallah, you'll be rewarded here after inshallah. Okay, this is uh, about, uh, talking about uh, this is very sensitive. Okay, it's about sexuality, homosexuality. I know uh, 
it's, it's very, uh, I have friends that are, that are gays, but they are Muslims. So they, uh, they ask me, uh, Tom, so uh, is, is it okay to be a gay and a Muslim? Then I, I said I said to him, I mean, you have your own answer, right? I mean, you shouldn't be asking me. So I said, uh, so my friend said, okay, Tom, I'm going to tell you a story, and now you're going to judge me or not. I say, I'm not going to judge you. But then he said, no, no, I still want to tell this story to you. I said, okay, please. So I, I'm like a, I'm like a not certified, uh, what? Counselor. Based <laughs> on all these stories. But the very interesting part is when I learn about Islam and when I look into all these stories, sometimes it's not like, it's not that easy to say things like, okay, this is halal, this is haram. Okay? Sometimes at that situation, there's some tweak. You can tweak, uh, twitch a bit uh, the rulings to make sure that uh, it, uh, it is in accordance with this today's context. Okay? So uh, I'm talking uh, to this guy. He said that, Atam, uh, I'm with a guy. Okay? I'm with a guy. And of course, we do all these uh, sexual activities. But one fine day, these guys uh, decided to uh, repent to Taubat and decided to, got married, uh, to, to, to get married uh, to the lady. Then, I, uh, then he said to me, so what happened to me? I'm a Muslim too and he's a Muslim. So when, once he repent, he can just walk off like that? So uh, I mean, what, what's your answer? What's your take on this? So Ustaz needs to answer all these questions. I <laughs> say, yeah, this is not in our textbook. Uh, yeah. But I mean, like, really, what, what's your answer? As a Muslim, that guy, okay, he repented and he said he wants to get married to a lady. Okay? But this guy, you know, he's still in much of dilemma. He's a Muslim too. They say, okay, did a Taubat. Okay, I saw the Taubat. So he, he's not happy with someone else. What happened to me? So um, uh, I talked to him that you need to understand this is life. Okay? You mean that, I mean, you went through that phase with him, right? And you know, uh, it's, very, it's very sad to say this. Like he, said, he said this to me uh, after he so-called like rape me that he just want to walk off saying that he repented what, 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 do, what do you think as a Muslim do you think it's, it's fair to do that uh, it's a question okay so for me my main thing is if he if he's going to repent alhamdulillah good for him but at the same time I know that he's going to get married to a lady but as a Muslim even though you have repented you need to take care of your so-called your ex la the non-halal ex right? okay even though you're going to get married but you cannot leave this guy just like that just because you say, okay, I repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Can I drink? Yes. I'm not crying. <laughs> okay, as a responsible Muslim, I believe that even though that guy repented, okay, but he needs to take care of the guy that did up and about something together. And you need, and I believe that that guy needs to say uh, to my friend uh, over here, he said that I'm, I've repented, I'm not supposed to do this again. Not right in accordance with my religion, okay. But I respect you as who you are, okay. I believe that that guy should be doing that. But this guy just walk off just like that, repent. So, and this guy, uh, is very depressed and he doesn't believe in Islam anymore because he believes that is, is that Islam is all about, you know, you know, just repent and you just walk off like that after all those years of love. So, uh, it's just for us to think about Islam. You're just saying about Shahada, Shahada, but when things like this happen in life, what do we do as a Muslim? What's our take on this? Okay, maybe we are not in this situation, but one, maybe one finding out that we have our friends, our very good friends, our family members, our relatives are to be in this uh, spot. How do we help them to get out of this situation? Okay, and I have another uh, ten, 10 more minutes, right? <coughs> Talking about in traffic, this is uh, the topic of we, uh, for instance, all of us here, we believe in shahada. We make our shahada. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, ashhadu an Muhammad Rasulullah. But I believe that all of us have uh, different kind of, uh, for instance, a different school of thoughts. We have different things on different things. For instance, uh, the most common is uh, Salafi, okay, and versus Sufi, okay. This is uh, this this always happens uh, in the world right now, okay. So um, believe in the same God and the same Prophet, but we have different uh, kind of understanding of certain rulings in Islam. Okay? And this happens. This happens not just uh, in this era, back in those days. In fact, during Prophet Muhammad's time. Once Prophet Muhammad وسلم, passed away, this thing has started. Okay? And up till now. And this we have been talking about, uh, we have not talked about Shia. And uh, my friend said, uh, uh, Tom, you should be talking about liberal Muslims. Okay, I'm not going to talk about that. Okay? 
Okay, I'm just kidding. They have their own uh, sense of belief, and I, I have mine. Okay, but the most important thing, if you believe in the same God, same uh, prophet, uh, the same prophet, I believe that we shouldn't be uh, harping on the very petty stuff. We should be talking about something that is bigger. For instance, how to make sure that our society, for instance, specifically our Malay uh, community, how do you uh, elevate the status of the uh, uh, Malays in Singapore, our education standard, or maybe our economy. More on that, not on talking about, okay, for instance, uh, doing maulid. Is maulid or not? Can we do maulid or can we not? Like after solat, uh, uh, should we read the doa after solat or should we not? Uh, let's not talk about that anymore. If you want to talk about that, uh, it's up to you. But if you keep on harping on these small things, and we are still, uh, to be honest, uh, to be honest, Malays, you know our, our standings in the society, right? First and foremost, we never start on the same starting line, and we still keep on gadu pasal benda benda that is very petty. And it, for me, it's not it's not good. It's not healthy. If you want to talk about things, okay, you talk about uh, at an academic level, we discuss about things properly. What should we do? What should we educate our community, our society? Not gadu gadu on Facebook, okay? Muda habi, limi puli, muda timeng, ada macam itu. Don't do that. Don't do that. For me, it's not. And uh, being in a very uh, religious punya circle, when I when I go uh, to the US, of course I meet different kind of people, and we talk about we discuss about different things. And when we talk about Islam, it's very complex. I would say, for instance, we are when we are talking about life insurance, whether we can take life insurance or not. And I believe that some Muslims say we can. Okay, for instance, uh, 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 I and my mother. Okay, we don't have any other family members. If I were to pass away, who's going to take care of my mom? So I, as a, as a son, as the only son, I'm going to take life insurance. And to some Ustaz, they say it's haram, life insurance is not, uh, uh, it's not accepted in Islam. For my take, it's very different if it's on uh, con the conditions of uh, the person and at which context. I believe that for that person, it's okay. But for you who is healthy and I believe that you can support your mom, try not to have uh, to take uh, life insurance. So these, these takes are not as easy as what it seems to be like, okay, this is haram. Life insurance is haram, it's haram. There are no more discussions. In Islam, we are open to discussions and we need to see uh, whether that person, uh, that, that person's condition in, in, in this country, for instance, all right? Okay, and like I said, like Shia, okay, uh, before you talk about Shia, the Shiites, you need to learn about them. You need to know uh, their groups, you need to know their school of thoughts, okay, their principle. You, it's not like Shia is haram. They believe in Sayyidina Ali should be the prophet. It's not as simple as that. If you learn about uh, the Shia, it's more than that. So never say that it's halal or haram just yet. You need to learn about them, you need to do some research. And if you do not agree to their sets of beliefs, it's up to you because that's your choice. But at the same time, you are not supposed to impose whatever your beliefs to them. Their Islam might be different from your Islam. Okay, at least as Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, you believe that your Islam is the right one, go on with it. Alhamdulillah. And in Singapore, we are not supposed to have uh, to say gadu gadu. Uh, in, in Malaysia, it's a bit different. You can gadu gadu. Okay. <laughs> not in Singapore. When I was in Malaysia, I studied there for three years. How they? Uh, no, not I, I'm not generalizing all the Malaysians. Okay, no. But some of the scholars, when they gadu about Shia, Sufi, Salafi, it's very, it's very crude and it's very disgusting. Okay. And once they are talking about, they are debating. Their debate is not uh, on a very uh, rational level, but more on very personal. Okay, and it doesn't do anything. It doesn't benefit the Ummah. Okay. And uh, one of the ways how to uh, reaffirm your uh, faith in Islam, uh, my, at least for my, my practice, is these three things are uh, the mental aspect, the spiritual aspect, and the physical aspect. For me, mental, I need to chill for my studies. Okay, be it formal or formal education. And I believe uh, the sets of knowledge, of course, in this world, is aggregate between the two uh, Islamic knowledge. Rawi or the uh, academic, right? For me, I don't care. I need to ease both. Okay, this that doesn't mean that you need to score A for exams, but at least, la, of course, la, A means you're good. Okay, uh, you need to you need to be good in both worlds. Okay, you need to be very good, and at the same time, how to be good, you need to start young. Okay, and if you're really good in your academics, mashallah, take some time. I believe that I know that we are very busy, and this is your 11th week. Okay, you're very busy, but once you're done, Try to take some, uh, uh, you go for Islamic talks, Islamic courses, or maybe you can take some diploma in uh, Islamic uh, field knowledge or 
maybe take both for Buddha, Azumi, and many more. Okay. And the second one, I believe in the spiritual aspect. Uh, I believe that as, as, as Muslims, okay, uh, there are many challenges in this world. I believe that if we want to go uh, the normal way, sometimes it's not that easy. For instance, doing da'wah, for instance, just like uh, uh, for us, Asatiza, you, you know the concept of uh, the practice of black magic. Okay, this is something I'd like to talk about, but these things exist uh, in the current world. So for, for the type of, of a person that only believe in macam apa ni, ala ni semua benda-benda merepeat. Sometimes you need to step back, at the same time you need to understand about your Zikir uh, and Salawat, to read Al-Quran, to defend yourself from all these uh, 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 negativities or attacks. Okay? So mental, spiritual is very important, and spiritual doesn't mean you just Zikir, Zikir, je. it's not just like that, being a pragmatic Muslim. Okay, means you are uh, you you are going to be a Muslim that is very uh, realistic. Okay, at the same time it must be very sharp. The last one is the physical aspect of life. Okay, because one of the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Prophet Muhammad is very fit. He is very healthy. And remember, uh, if you are not healthy, whatever you have, for instance, if you are not healthy, the knowledge that you have, okay, and uh, you are very pious, but you can't do anything when you are bedridden in the hospital. So I believe that. To be a proper Muslim, you need to follow Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa wasallam. Okay, if you can't be like Prophet Muhammad, at least be like, you know, try to be like him. Maybe like 1%, 0.1% maybe. 0 0.01 at least. Or maybe lesser than that. Okay, but you just cannot say like, oh, Prophet Muhammad, uh, don't eat McDonald's, I eat. So, I say, one of my students say that, so I cannot be like Prophet Muhammad. I say, don't eat McDonald's, lah. I mean, of course, like, you can eat, but not too much, you know, something like that. So if you have these three, these three aspects, and I believe that, inshallah, you can be a, a proper Muslim. I wouldn't say complete, but a proper Muslim, inshallah. Uh, so is that okay for the meantime? So yeah, I believe that you can ask uh, any questions. If I can answer, I will. If I can't, I'm very sorry. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Thank you so much, Ustaz, for uh, sharing Okay, uh, so the first question is, um, someone asked Ustaz, if I only keep up the first pillar, meaning the shahada, but I don't always fulfill the other pillars, does that make me a disbeliever then? So Ustaz, okay, so now, uh, you need to know that the first pillar, which is the shahada, shahada is like uh, the strongest pillar of the five pillars of Islam. If you believe in Allah, Prophet Muhammad, inshallah, like I say, if you have, uh, if you have, uh, Sangkabai apa in English? <laughs> so, Tanya Syed, you have good thoughts uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will give, will, will help you inshallah. But I believe that uh, it's not just fair by saying that, you know, I can just do what I cannot do with others. I believe that you need to make an effort, okay? Uh, they say, uh, take baby steps, slowly. You, you, you still have time, okay? Uh, you know, until before you pass away, I believe that we still have time to do that. Uh, slowly, inshallah, if you believe in Allah, Prophet Muhammad, slowly you can pray. Make, make a step at a time, okay? Don't rush things. But like I said, like macam puasa is only like seasonal. Macam we cakap, bulan uh, Ramadan, okay? Ramadan je puasa. Okay lah for that 30 days. I think you can practice that, right? Salat five times a day. I know that it's quite hard to pray when you have lectures. But for myself, uh, like for instance, I have three hours lecture. Uh, I think I just cakap dengan my uh, professor, Prof, I need to go to the toilet. And the Prof will understand. No, I just go out. And I believe in university, sometimes you just can walk off just like that, right? You need to face it. But for my, my class, master's class, I don't around. So like, you know, five percent, <laughs> just cannot chow. Hey, why are you going off? You can answer, is it? <laughs> so yeah, we stay there, you know, I just see that. Okay? But uh, I was once in this one, a very uh, big organization, Muslim, Malay, Muslim organization, they were talking about Islam, this and that, blah, 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 about all those theories and concepts. But they're talking everything about everything. They are very much Allah. But I mean, uh, I look at Zohor, they never pray. Asar, they never pray. For me, uh, I, I used to respect them this much, but sekarang tak tengah-tengah. Because they never pray. For me, you can talk about Islam, but if you don't pray, it's quite meaningless, obviously. The best is if you can talk about Islam and you can pray. That is mashallah. Slowly, take a, uh, take a step at a time, inshallah. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah, wait. And I want to add something that <laughs> uh, you need to know that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, okay? Uh, Allah, Allah is not, not going to judge we just like humans. That's why we are humans. We judge people like that, right? And the work of God is very uh, is very unique. You, you can never think of it. Sometimes Allah, if Allah can uh, forgive a prostitute, I mean, 
uh, one of the prostitutes uh, uh, is guaranteed to have it, okay? And one more if you are a Muslim, inshallah. Sometimes you can put those in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, sir. Right? choices, uh, bracket, hijab, sexuality, etc. People around her think that she's not Muslim uh, and therefore making her dislike Islam. So how do I help her? Okay, remember uh, uh, when, you, when you are believing in Allah, you're not trying you, you are going to make sure that you know, Allah loves you, right? Not the others to love you. For me, I don't care. Like, for instance, like one of my friends, she's not wearing hijab at at this point of time, but she said that uh, I, I see solat one, I see you, Alhamdulillah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens your heart and find it, you'll wear the hijab. Slowly, it takes time. Okay, I have a friend in Rambodia, a blonde, he's a guy, uh, he's a guy, he's a guy, he's a guy, so when he walks in, in, uh, uh, in one of the majlis, so one of the uncles said, hey, the malaika will never come to you, the malaika will ne- not make dua for you. Then I look at the party, I was like, okay, like, like malaika will come to you, I mean like, <laughs> <laughs> You cannot be seen that to a person. I know that because sometimes when you look at a person, you need to know that sometimes that person is going through uh, a lot in life. Okay, maybe that person just started to know about Islam. Okay, and sometimes change is not so immediate. It takes time. And when I talk to with that friend of mine, he now he says it's not blonde anymore. It's black. Alhamdulillah. What's that? Uh, he doesn't dye black eh? because that will dye black like again. That's why he dye dark brown. Alhamdulillah. Now the tone is gone. Slowly he's free. Mashallah. You need to give some time. You just if you just somebody, this is haram. Allah will never Allah will never accept your deeds. Like that party is Allah. That party is party. The party is not Allah. Sometimes remember, if uh, I remember one of the celebrity once said this, if you live by the uh, praises of others, you're gonna die by their criticisms. So we are putting aura. If you believe in Allah, you do things for Allah, not for others. Take time, inshallah. Okay. So yeah. Uh, so next question is uh, Do you think it's important for us lay people To understand the intricacies of the different sects of Islam Like as mentioned by Ustaz just now The, the issues between Salafi and Wahhabi and, uh, and Sufi And perhaps and also uh, Shia etc Okay so uh, it's uh, labeling things Okay this is just uh, something that we uh, of course, my answer is you're not supposed to label uh, others, right? You're not supposed to label them this and that. But you know that when you go to NGC, supermarket, all the things are the labels. So naturally, you have the labels. Once you're in that group or in that sect, people will call you as such. For instance, I, I go to the habit, they call me Sufi. Suddenly when uh, uh, and some other things I do, they call me uh, Salafi. So it's got satu ni aku. For me, I believe in what I think is right and based on knowledge. You don't, you don't just follow things based on what you want or what you search on Google, just that. For me, you need to have a teacher to do things. And of course, it's not healthy to keep on labeling others, but in this world, uh, you, you can't avoid that, right? If you are, for instance, if you are, uh, you know, you're in the science stream, people call you the science student, you know? If you're in the art, people call you art. Literally, even if you don't like, hey, jangan nak jangan pergi rumah sini. This is the this is the fact that you are living in this, this type of world. Uh, of the world, okay? So it, it's unavoidable. But of course, as a Muslim, we don't do that. Is that okay? Inshallah. Okay, so how... Okay, so the question is, uh, how do I affirm my shahada when I don't witness God or His Prophet? Okay, that's very interesting. It's very hard to answer, okay? Uh, even uh, some Muslims are going to say that, okay? And I think I know who asked this question. He's smiling at me. Okay, uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, let's get back to what Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that uh, once he said to his companions, he said that uh, I've got this type of book. A group of people or a person that loves me, okay, uh, more than what all of you can love me. I mean, all the companions of Rasulullah said, who else can love you like, uh, uh, I mean, how we are loving you at this point of time. He said that those who, those who don't see me are in the future, but they believe in me. So this is one of the hadith you can check. So Prophet Muhammad have that trust in us. 
you know, and at that point of time, we are still not, uh, not putting forth it, uh, on this earth. But also, we have that trust on us. So let's believe, let's think the other way that we should believe in Prophet Muhammad, even when you're not saying him. And one way, this is very cliche, but this is the answer. You need to know that how, uh, whether Prophet Muhammad existed or not, the yeah, Quran, the Hadith. You know? And you, it's, it's not logical that uh, a religion that has the, one of the most, uh, what was Panganon in English? Ah, followers, like billions of Muslims in the world. In, in this world, cannot be, you know, be born out of just a random person. And so, what is Muhammad fake? And if a fake can have that 1.5 billion, I don't know, one of billions of followers, you just imagine, can it be fake? Is it logical? It's not, right? So, I believe that, for me, I believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a God, I believe that Prophet Muhammad is a messenger of God through Al Quran and Sunnah. All, and remember all these, they have uh, a very proper sana. They have all these, uh, when you are listening about history, they are proper chains of narratives, listening to the hadith. It's not just people search on Google, it's not that. Islam is more than that. If you read the Quran, you learn about the hadith, you learn about the history of Islam, and you need, and of course you need to know, there will be a maker, right? And uh, one of my ustad said, uh, somebody about Apple, you know who's that guy, right? Then uh, my ustaz said, then siapa buat kau, the company? So of course you'll be a creator. And you're not going to believe in the, those big bang theories, right? People came from what? Uh, Darwinism theory. Uh, are we from apes? Uh, if you are, then uh, it's up to you. I'm not. I'm not from India. Yeah, so uh, if you learn about, uh, I, I met a few scientists, uh, I think they, they, they came to Darul Akka. They, they tried to debunk uh, the, the concept of Darwinism theory about the big bang theories. And they are scientists, they are legit, they are Muslims. And they are from Korean universities. And they preach uh, real stuff, mashallah. Sometimes you need to search a bit more. Alright? Inshallah. Because you don't mind, I add a bit as to. Because uh, I understand the question is about when you, when you don't witness God, uh, how do you then, like, how do you affirm the shahada? Uh, because there is as a famous hadith uh, of the, the rukun of the pillar of Ihsan. It's Antahmudallah ka anna ka tarahu fa illam takun tarahu fa innahu yarah. Which is, uh, you worship Allah uh, as though he, you can see Him. Which is this question here. As though you can see, but if you cannot reach that level, kafainna we are off. Very know that he can see you. So perhaps that is the first step. First, that if even if you cannot see Allah and His Prophet, perhaps the first step is knowing that Allah sees you. And inshallah, we uh, to build towards that of you seeing Allah and the Prophet. Inshallah. Religion, and my religion is a true one. So he an he answered the question with a question. He said that what if Islam is a true religion and yours is not? So he said that. Uh, sometimes, uh, you need to understand the fact that at times, right, you must not think so much, you must not overthink. You need, just need to believe that Allah is a true God and you believe that Islam is right. That's, that's one of the stronger parts uh, of your faith. You just believe in something that you don't see. That is mashallah. That's what Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said. That you guys believe in me uh, when you can't see me. And this is the strongest part of faith, mashallah. And trust me that uh, Prophet Muhammad said that the people of the future might have a better iman than the companions of Rasulullah. He might be one of you here, Mashallah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so the next question is Is it okay for a wife who slogs 24 hours a day? Uh, to keep the family alive, to go against a husband who emotionally abuses her. Okay. <laughs> I, uh, for me, right, uh, you must be smart. Uh. Muslims must be very sharp, like I said just now. Okay, once you know that you're in that situation, you must find a way out. You must not like sabar, sabar. The concept of sabar is not, you know, enduring pains for many years. It's not like that. Sabar means you need to be, you know, you need to find a way to find a solution to help you improve yourself. You know, once you have done all those efforts that you suffer, if your husband is just like that, you know, you, you go to the courts, you have to blah, 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 make sure you report, whatever. Emotionally abuse is considered as uh, abuse you love. Okay, if you learn about the, the law, it, uh, it can be, it's considered as a crime. If you really report, like you have that proof of black meaning, couple, everything, you can keep it and you need to report. And sometimes, right, don't think about Islam, Islam, just report. Right? Serious, serious. If you think too much about, uh, if I cannot, this is uh, this will be the haka. 
I'm not listening to my husband, this is dosa. If your husband is abusing you and you know that that's not in accordance with the, the teachings of Islam, so what, what are you going to do? Then when, uh, when the, uh, a real person asked me about this question, then I say, for how long have you been, I mean, you endured this? They said for 17 years. So after 17 years, then you need to have an answer from me. I'm just a kid. I said, I'm sorry, but I think you need to make the decision, your, decision yourself. You have the answer, but you dare not to make that decision. In life, sometimes you, you know you will do right. Just go. Then they check out. If I go to report, who's going to take care of the, my children? I'm not working. I'm not educated. I see Allah will take care of you. You just settle, and of course you can get help. Uh, seek professional help. Am I right? Ada PPIS, mana mana. You boleh pergi minta tolong. Petapa is kapo you. Just fine lah. Jangan takut sangat report je. Kalau susah sangat pergi. So I'm telling you, I'm not going to do it. Seventeen years to get an answer. It's crazy. Sometimes you just need to be. Very logical, realistic, and pragmatic Muslim. You just go on a day. Inshallah. Uh, if we take two more, inshallah, is that okay? Inshallah. Actually, uh, when you mentioned about the emotional abuse, I, I'm reminded by the sharing by Dr. Uh, Radia uh, last year during uh, when MS uh, uh, organized the mental health talk, in which she did mention that patience is not to accept, yeah. but patience is to make an effort to change the condition that you are in step uh, through perseverance and it's not I accept, no I'm abused, I accept, I accept, I accept no that's not patience, that's stupidity according to Dr. Radia so yeah, I'm uh, just sharing from uh, 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 certified lah, not me lah I'm, I'm just repeating her words with Okay, uh, some stars who spoke a fair bit about zina, I understand that it is one of the major sins. But uh, does Allah forgive this sin when committed in the past? Of course, if you make tawbah and nasuha, the true essence of tawbah, okay, Allah, will, Allah will forgive you. Okay, Allah is very forgiving. Allah is so much more forgiving uh, compared to a mother that can forgive uh, his, uh, her children. Okay, you know uh, uh, the love of Allah, right? If the anak buat salah, if the anak shuri the duit pun, the, the mom will uh, forgive that uh, uh, children, but Allah is so much more forgiving. And you need to know that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a very prominent hadith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is waiting for his servants to uh, to ask for forgiveness from him. Okay, he's the type that is very happy to help you, to forgive you. Uh, it's like when a traveler, okay, uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a desert, suddenly uh, his, uh, when, when he falls asleep, his uh, camel, uh, he laughed and he string and, and he string his foot for Hila at the point of time. He woke up. Of course, in the middle of the desert, you have no no uh, no support, uh, no life support, uh, no food supplies, no food. So you're, you're very pretty, right? But Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said that I'm very happy. It's like when a traveler in the middle of the desert without having anything suddenly, all those things came back to him to have. And of course, you know that he's he's very happy because he has all those, right? Allah is very happy as such. If you ask forgiveness from him, he will forgive you. But you need to trust him, and you must not uh, complicate yourself too much. You, you must not overthink, like, will Allah forgive me? Will the society accept me? If you want to change, you just go on with it. And inshallah, Allah will forgive you. Allah, Allah is God, okay? Allah is not humans. Okay, humans, you know, of course, if you're a you never go, okay, for instance, if you're a woman, sometimes, if ladies go for 20 years, I'm after. Allah is not like that. Okay, Allah is God, you know? I say my shahada, but I doubt myself. Am I a Muslim? In the first place, if you doubt yourself, why do you say shahada? Means if you say shahada, means you still believe in Allah and you believe that you are still a Muslim. If you if you don't say the shahada, like you just okay, I don't believe in Allah anymore, I don't believe in Prophet Muhammad, ah, then you are not a Muslim. But once you say Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu an Muhammad Rasul, then you say I'm a Muslim. You are a Muslim. If you are not, you are not gonna say that word. Am I right? Logic. Inshallah, jangan takut takut you're still a Muslim, inshallah, inshallah. Tadi semua dah syarat, semua dah Muslim, inshallah. <laughs> Remember, do not, do not overthink. Because if you keep on overthinking, shaitan will come to you. And once shaitan intercepts your uh, thinking process, you're done. Now what do we like? Done. Okay. I see the 
ada every day but I seem to make glorified worldly methods more than Allah. Astaghfirullah. <laughs> Does that make me less of a Muslim? Um, we, are, we, are, we are humans, right? Uh, I remember Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam brought uh, uh, Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu. You know Sayyidina Umar is one of the uh, most charismatic leaders and one of the uh, caliphate at one of time. He said, Oh Omar, before you become the leaders, before you become the leader of uh, the Arabian Peninsula, I'm going to bring you to a place. And uh, Sayyidina Umar said, Of course, Prophet Muhammad, you can do that. So uh, Sayyidina Umar followed Prophet Muhammad to a place that happens to be a slum. Okay? Uh, a slum. Photo, Najis, uh, all the dirty things in the headed place in the city. Then Rasulullah said to him, Oh Omar, these are the worldly affairs that you are chasing for. This is what you are having, what you want in life. So Prophet Muhammad did say that to uh, Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu, and of course uh, Sayyidina Umar at one time tried. And you just need to know that whatever you want in this world, which I'm, I don't know, for me, I personally I love LV. And I, I put LV not because people want to praise me, because, you know, to show my usaha. If I really work hard, I study hard, I get some of my praise, I buy, I feel like I'm thankful. Oh Allah, thank you so much for letting me to get a hold on an LV wallet, for instance. And it does, you need to know that the concept of uh, the, for you to, be, to have the best in this world and the hereafter. To have the best in this world, you can do your best in your career. But do not forget the solid. Do not forget your religion. And of course, you get, uh, you know, your first pay, you get some bonus, you want to buy things. It doesn't matter. As long as you pray, you do your zakat, you make sadaqa, you infaq, I believe that you are good to go. Okay? But if you were to get, uh, if you are too uh, uh, preoccupied, cheesing for this worldly affairs, until you forget the solid, you, neg uh, you neglect uh, your parents, uh, you start to uh, not, not, like your religion, and that one is a different case. As long as you are on the right path, I believe that you chase for the world, and also the year after, you get the best of the both worlds, and I believe it's okay. Nothing wrong with that. Buying uh, luxurious goods doesn't make you uh, less Muslim. You don't know what I'm Or like you talk around, is it? I don't think so. It's okay. Inshallah. Alhamdulillah, thank you, sir. I guess balance is important, eh? But moderation. Moderation. I don't like the word uh, moderate Islam. For me, <laughs> moderate doesn't mean mediocre, okay? okay? Moderate doesn't mean like you're complacent. Moderate means like you strive for the best, and on certain aspects, you need to find the, uh, the, the, the fine balance. For instance, living in Singapore, it's not as easy to say that. You know that uh, if you say that Shahada in English, the others would find it uh, quite uh, offensive. Like, Oh, so you're trying to say that your God is a true one and mine is not. That's why they say Ashura Allah like in Arabic. And for me, if you want to say things in English, for me, you don't say that. And if you want to say that in English, you need to make them understand. I, I, I discuss it uh, with my non-Muslim friends. I say that this is my beliefs, my sets of beliefs. But at the same time, I'm respecting your religion. But this is what, uh, you know, it's been said in the commandments that I need to say this. Because this is my religion and yours is yours. So I'm not going to cross over the line to say that yours is blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to say that mine uh, is better than yours. It's not like that. Okay, we don't mean it that way. All right? Uh, you as scholars, I believe that you need to really know your religion even better than 
people of that ability that if you can really show for your academic studies and at the same time, of course, you can understand your religion better. Okay, inshallah. Is that, is that good enough? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, inshallah. Uh, thank you so much for all your questions. Uh, there were a few others, but I think at first 9.15 already, uh, we have to bring the question and answer session to an end. Uh, so let's like start again once again for uh, shedding light on some of the important and perhaps uh, heavy questions that uh, we all needed, some of us needed to education to.